Hi, I'm Zan Rowe and this is Melbourne's iconic Melba Spiegel tent, where tonight you're invited to a special intimate show featuring Australia's most loved artist, Missy Higgins. Here on ABC and Double J, Missy will open her incredible songbook and joining her, some pretty special friends. Casey Chambers, Ben Abraham, Dan Sultan, Greta Ray and Midnight Oil's Peter Garrett. But before we go inside, Let's take a trip down Missy's musical memory lane. Maybe this is us now. Singer, songwriter, environmental activist, actress and humanitarian, Missy Higgins has sold over two million albums worldwide and won a remarkable nine ARIA awards. Growing up in a musical family, Missy was launched into Australia's music industry at just 16 years old, when she won the Triple J Unearthed competition with All For Believing. So I didn't realise what Triple J Unearthed was at the time, but my sister sent in my demo to them and I got a call a few months later from a woman who told me the big news and I had no idea how much my life was about to change. Soon after, Missy signed to indie label Eleven. And doesn't it feel peculiar? Her debut album was a huge hit and The Sound of White featured songs still loved to this day, Scar, Ten Days and The Special Two. Its follow-up, On A Clear Night, was another massive success with singles Where I Stood, Peachy and Steer. My main goal is to keep improving and to keep making music that surprises other people and surprises me. And I'm floating away. Surprising her fans again, Missy released an album of covers, Oz, paying tribute to her favourite Australian artists. She hit the road to tour the album, pregnant with her first child, Samuel Arrow Lee. Since then, Missy has toured stadiums with Ed Sheeran and welcomed her second child, Luna, into the world. Playing the Spiegel Tent has always been on my bucket list. I've seen a few shows there over the years and I just love the venue. I love it in, in the round and it's got such a beautiful, intimate feel and so much character. So I'm very excited and to be playing with these um, special guests, it's going to be super special. I'm going to start off the evening by playing the song that kind of started it all. This is all for believing.
cold I will stay Maybe fate will guide the way I believe in what I see And baby we were meant to be Just believe Just believe Just believe And trust the So we've put an end to it this time I'm no longer yours And you're no longer mine You said this hill looks far too steep If I'm not even sure That it's me you wanna keep And it's been ten days without play um, a song next that is from my second album and this is a song that uh, when I released it in America it ended up being by far the most successful song of mine um, to be released over there and it became a single and they put it in a few little TV shows over there like Smallville and One Tree Hill and um, 
Grey's Anatomy. Back then that was the big thing to get on Grey's Anatomy, so it was like the coolest thing ever. And it was in this really uh, random scene where, and this ambulance was, was um, it had kind of, the brakes had broken on this ambulance and it was like heading towards a house and it crashed into the house and then flipped upside down and one of the lead actors was like impaled on something upside down <laughs> with blood dripping out of his head. And then my song came on. <laughs> It was so funny, I was like, wow, what made them look at that scene and just think, hmm, a Missy Higgins song would be perfect right here. I, I didn't really care though, I was, uh, was honoured. So this is where I stood. I don't know what I've done Or if I like what I've become But something told me to run and honey, you know me and so oh and none There were sounds in my head little voices whispering that I should go and this Black and white That it was wrong Or it was right But you ain't leaving without a fight And I think I am just as torn Just as torn inside Cause I don't know who I am Who I am without
I'm very, very excited about this next song because I'm going to be inviting a special guest up on stage. I've admired this woman for a long time. I started listening to her music when I was in high school, just starting out as a budding singer-songwriter, and I'm very honoured to invite her up here to sing Going North with me. This is Casey Chambers, everybody. <laughs> Well, the storm's rolling in under this beautiful Spiegel tent tin roof. It certainly is. Missy Higgins, let's begin at the beginning. OK. Can you remember the feeling that you had when you wrote your first song? Depends what you call my first song. When I was in year... God, I think it was about year five, I wrote a song on piano that was this whole instrumental story about a, a convict coming to Australia because he'd stolen a pig out, out of the front yard of a sheriff's house and... And, and the song ended with him being beheaded and there's like a dong, dong for the bell. Um, That's some dark stuff on an 11 year old, 10 year old. I know. <laughs> and that felt really awesome. Like, I was so proud of myself because it was, you know, I had all these little different parts of the story going on. Then I started to kind of slowly form my own style and sound. And I mean, my first real song was All for Believing. Mm. Um, and how old were you when you wrote that? Uh, 15. I was in year 10. Yeah. Um, and I wrote it for a class music assignment. <laughs> and I think I just... I, I felt really satisfied because up until that point I'd been 
writing pseudo songs, but I'd never felt as though I was able to express myself in the way I really wanted to. Mm. And for some reason, everything just kind of fell into place with that song. That was the song that, of course, won Triple J Unearthed for you. Yeah. I actually have the cassette that it was entered mm. into. Oh, my and gosh. I've seen this before. Yeah. Melissa Higgins. Yeah. On the cover. But I had never realised that when you actually open up what you dubbed it over... What did I dub it over? I don't even know. It's some sort of medical tape uh -huh. instructional <laughs> update. And you're funny. I mean, you're my dad's a, GP, a doctor, so that must have been... Dermatology update, <laughs> managing the diabetic patient. How funny. When did you get a, a feeling of where this could lead and how big this could become for you? Your song on the radio yeah. and then what could follow? Yeah, I mean, I think it was when um, they told me that I was going to be doing a concert at Awaki Auditorium and my song was going to get on radio on high rotation. And then I think when I got signed to a record label on my 18th birthday, a few months after winning Unearthed. Because my dad said to me, maybe you don't have to go to uni now. Maybe, maybe you know, you get a um, get out of uni free card and this is a legitimate career. So I stopped filling out my application forms for uni and I was like, okay, this is, I'm gonna do music now. This is gonna be my thing. What for you makes a good song? A massive part of songwriting for me is the ability to connect with other people because for me that's kind of what life is it's like connecting with other people in order to understand yourself better sharing your stories and having that that feedback is kind of what it's all about for me this is a one a two a one two three
waiting for you to show Thinking too fast Trying to breathe slow Longing for the handle To turn on the door And every sign you passed along the way Looked twisted and burned With messages it left seen or heard but you drove on anyway and oh now all of a sudden you're here and I just can't remember a time So this next song, uh, I'm going to invite a very good friend of mine up on stage, someone who I admire so much. He's an incredible, incredible songwriter and um, has one of my, my favourite voices in the biz. Ben Abraham, put your hands together. <laughs> Ben was kind enough to sing on this song and it is called Run So Fast. I saw this day 
could not, no, we could not fail. And until now, well, I've been bold, I've loved it, fire I've danced through the unknown. Oh, but lately, things have shaped. Ben Abraham, everybody. <laughs> Missy, social justice has been such a big part of your life for so many years. Why is that so important to you? I guess, I, yeah, I, I've always had a sense of social justice, but once I got to the point where I, I felt like I had some sort of platform. It felt like a, a waste to not help out in any way in areas that I, that I, that I could. For someone who seems to have had such a strong sense of, sense of empathy throughout your whole life, uh, it sounds like it's just increasing as starting your own family and all the life changes that you've been through. It's just getting yeah, bigger and bigger. Maybe. Yeah, I think having kids has... It's enabled me to get out of my head a little bit, I think. Um, I used to do a lot of self-analysis and it's not so much that anymore. It's like I'm looking outwards a bit more, so that's a bit healthier. I bigger think. picture. Yeah, a bit more bigger picture, yeah. Does it also work as a kind of another form of inspiration to look outward and, and feel something that you can react to in, in song form when you're writing? Um, well, I don't think I do it for that reason, but I think that's, that's inevitably what I'm sensitive to because that's, that's kind of how I'm built. And when I wrote my song, O Canada, I was particularly sensitive at, at that point about young children because I'd just had a baby. It was a new so, rea in reaction to that harrowing image of, of a young Syrian Kurdy. Yeah, yeah, refugee yeah. washed up on the shore. That photo was just, yeah, it was really harrowing and whether it be writing a song about it or helping out playing a charity gig or bringing awareness to it enables me to feel as though I'm doing something progressive. I am extremely honoured to invite these ladies up on stage. We're going to be singing a song of mine called O Canada and they are going to be our backup choir. This is the Lady Choir, everybody. So this is, uh, this is one of my more, uh, I guess, emotional songs for me to perform. I, I wanted to write a song about it, although I needed kind of wait a, a bit. I waited a few months for it to kind of sink in and then um, I realised that I wanted to tell the story of this family who had tried to escape the terror in their country and find somewhere safe to live and just what an incredibly hard decision that must have been um, for their father, Abdullah. And um, I thought I want to humanise this family because in another life, in another time, any of us could have been them and all they wanted was a safe place to live. 
So I was particularly angry at, at the time about our government kind of refusing to humanise these people and re refusing to, to give them safe harbour because I was looking at my child and I was just thinking that, that could have been you in another lifetime and that's just too devastating to think about. So this is the, the story of their family's journey across the, the seas, ultimately trying to get to, to relatives in Canada, but sadly they didn't make it. It's quite appropriate that the rain has just started. He was carried from the water by a soldier And the picture screams a thousand different words He was running from the terror with his father Who once believed that nothing could be worse So he'd handed a man two thousand precious dollars the way you'd rest a bird in a lion's open jaw And he told the boys that Canada was waiting That there was hope upon her golden shores But at night he said a quiet prayer into the wind You open up your arms towards the sea Oh my Canada If you could help me out All I ever wanted was a safe place for my family Where the days were long, but the nights were even longer And the baby boys never left their mother's side But the boat was small and the waves were getting stronger And they began to fear they'd not survive So the father said, we gotta hold each other tighter I'm not This is 
song called Everyone's Waiting. expected to play but in the reflection I am worlds away as I put my costume on eyelashes one by one been doing this so long Behind my back And everyone's waiting But it's getting harder to hear What my heart is saying Cause everyone's waiting Thank you very much. This next song is uh, another song that I wrote for my husband. I wrote this song about how him and I met up in Broome in WA. And uh, I was sitting in the living room of um, our mutual friend's house. And he was living there at the time. And uh, I was sitting on this kind of grotty futon couch <laughs> when he walked out. And something in me just went ping. And, um, we got chatting and, and over the coming weeks we fell in love. He asked me to sing I Was Made For Loving You um, in his band, who were called the Cable Bitches, which is a <laughs> cable beach. And uh, so we actually kind of fell in love while duetting on I Was Made For Loving You in full, like, 80s leotard wigs makeup get up. And uh, it was pretty pretty raunchy.
And now our, our son's favourite song is I Was Made For Loving You. It's really funny. But this is a song about the, that futon couch and, and everything it witnessed in the early days. Get your minds out of the gutter. Nothing like that happened on the futon couch, OK? Trust me. If, you, if you'd seen the couch, you'd know why. I was sitting on a futon couch in a far off town where the desert meets the sea. You were only wrapped in a towel when you walked out the spare room of my friend's house. Oh, I feel I've met you before. Something inside me is trying to remember a story. Oh, I think I've loved you. I've loved you before. Something is tugging my sleeve like a secret whisper from the future. Maybe this is us now. Maybe this is us. Hey, hey, what do you say? Wanna make history start today? Hey, boy, what do you say? We jump from here. Hey, what are you thinking? The lady knock against the kitchen sink. Town where your friends always drop by unannounced for tea. Oh, and where the pain of the world was swallowed when the sunset wiped you clean. Oh, I knew I'd heard it before. Nothing's changing till everything changes at once. Oh, I knew I felt it right down to my core. Something was rotting itself on the walls of our future heart. about inviting this next guest up on stage. I first met him when we were both singing on the Kev Carmody tribute tour and uh, I then saw him soon after play at the Corner Hotel and he just absolutely blew me away with his voice and his songwriting and um, I was lucky enough to both cover one of his songs on my Oz record and um, get him to sing a Slim Dusty song with me. So I'd like to invite him up on stage now to sing that song with me. This is Dan Sultan, everybody. It's an honour to be here. Thanks for having me. It's such an honour to have you here. It's going really well. It sounds beautiful. It's going well? Yeah, it's it going is. all right? Good. Yeah. Thank you.
Missy Higgins in 2018 has a new album, a best of, a young family. What would you tell teenage Missy if you had the chance to now? It's hard, you know, because you don't listen to anyone's opinion when you're a teenager. <laughs> Valid <laughs> even point. My own, even to my own, my <laughs> older self, I wouldn't have listened to. I would have just said, you know, one day you're not going to have any of these worries on your shoulder. How different is it writing songs for just yourself to then writing songs where there's hundreds of thousands of people waiting on them too. Oh, it's, a lot of it is, is just a matter of trying to forget that <laughs> when you're writing a song, trying to forget that there's people waiting for, for your music. I think that's a big part of the reason I took a huge break after my second album and I felt like my music wasn't mine anymore and there was too many people around me. It had been made into this business and that was not what music was about for me. So I had to really get back to a place where all of that was stripped away and music was just my thing for me mm. again. So what's next? What's left on the Missy Higgins bucket list? Uh, I really want to swim with whales. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one for the bucket list. Yeah, I want to go to Uluru. Um, Have you never been to Uluru? No, I can't believe that I've never been there. I want to see the Valley of the Winds. I want to keep surprising the, the teenage Missy. <laughs> I want to keep impressing her, basically. <laughs> <laughs> keep that conversation going. Yeah. Even exactly. if she's not always listening, you yeah, know that you're yeah. always talking to her. Yeah, I'll be the an annoying older auntie that's just going, come on, keep going, you can do better. <laughs> yeah. It's going to be a lot of fun one day. You're going to do a lot of fun things in your life. Go a lot of fun places and 
embarrassing to a lot of people. How are you guys going out there? Are you feeling... Are you feeling good? <laughs> this is the special do.
These are desperate times, my dear There's no way out of here There's no way out, my dear Such an incredible honor to sing with that man. When we were rehearsing that in, uh, in Soundcheck, you should have seen the smiles on everybody's faces. <laughs> the whole band was like, <laughs> this is happening. <laughs> Very cool. Okay. This is another song from Solastalgia. I wrote this song when I was in America and uh, there was a lot of talk going on about the gun laws um, because there had been yet another shooting, and this time at the uh, a, a nightclub in Orlando, and uh, it was really it was really shocking and sad to be there amongst all this uh, this um, anger towards um, the government and the, the the people's feeling of futility at not being able to to change these laws after time and time again um, a mass shooting would happen. So um, I wrote this song in response. It's called 49 Candles. Another one down, another life lost, 
Another night freedom comes at a cost Another big story, another headline Another excuse for spinning more lies But our voices, where do they go? We're calling out but nothing I get very excited about this next song because it's my chance to shine on the cowbell. <laughs> I play it for about two and a half seconds, but it might just be my favourite part of the gig. This is Unashamed Desire. Open up my chest if you like 
This is Warm Whispers. Your warm whispers Out of the dark They carry my heart Your warm whispers Into the dawn They carry me through And I'm weeping Warm honey and milk That you stay surrounding me surrounding me you warm whispers swirling me round in a pool of you you warm whispers I keep in the noise from breaking through and I
All right, well, I want to invite a very special lady up on stage. She, um, she's fairly new on the music scene and um, I think I heard her, her songs a few years ago when somebody sent me a, an, a demo EP and I was just blown away by her songwriting and, um, and her voice. And, uh, yeah, I'm so excited to, to invite her out here to sing this duet with me. This is Greta Ray, everybody. <laughs> So this is a song called Stia from my second album. It's a song that I wrote in Broome in WA when I was having a, a bit of a existential moment on Cable Beach looking up at the stars. One of those moments that make you feel very, very tiny. And, uh, and it's a good feeling. It's an empowering feeling.
Last song. This has been so much fun. <laughs> All right, this is Scar. Thank you, guys. Fine as well. 